4.4, the organization and structure of data. Now this unit builds very much upon some of the knowledge you've gained upon how we make data, data types, data structures from the AS units. But our first main objective is in file design. And it's talking about how files might be created, organized, updated, or processed by other programs. First of all, there's a big difference between a serial and a sequential file. A serial file is what happens when we just add new records to the back of a file, and that's normally what happens in the majority of data systems you've built already. And if you're using Python and you open a file in the append mode, that's with the A flag turned on, this is an exact serial file. And we use these with the orders not important, where the number of records is small, and where the data does need to be stored in a chronological order. But there is a difference in a sequential file. And a sequential file is where we store the records in a specific order, something that we define in advance. One of these types of files is an indexed file, and they have their records ordered by a key field that we decide. And this makes searching much easier, as they are already in order. So we could use something like binary search, a divide and conquer algorithm, to make that searching process much, much shorter. Inserting records, though, becomes much more difficult because you can't just stick some data on the end and carry on with your life. You need to have a temporary file to copy everything up to the point of insertion in, add in the new record, and then copy the rest of the remaining file. So there's more memory requirements and more processing requirements needed to add to an indexed file. Master and transaction files are also something that bears consideration. This is what happens where you have a huge amount of data contained in a file. And if that's the case, I mean, for instance, the size of Amazon's sales history, trying to order something and get it added to the master file would take probably hours to add that piece of data. So the idea is that instead of adding everything to the master file, we have a working file for that day called a transaction file and updating the file isn't going to take too long. It'll happen in real time because it's a, a small file. And what happens is at the end of the day, we take all those things in the transaction file and copy them into the master file in the correct place. This can take as long as it needs because we can do this as a batch processing job, maybe in the evening. The next objective we need to talk about is file organization. So first of all, what is a hashing algorithm? Well, the point of hashing is that if we want to be able to find data without a massive complex search, a hashing algorithm can speed it up enormously. And what a hashing function is, is it gives any data that you present to it a numerical representation, and it's a process that can be repeated. So when I'm inserting the data, I can find a numerical representation for it and put it in that location. And when I'm looking for it, I can work out the numerical representation and find it just as quickly. Now this is used to find positions in random access files. And this is also why random access memory, the physical memory in your computer, has the same name, because I should be able to find any piece of memory in the same amount of time. So here's an example of a hashing function. Uh, you've got your hash table on the right hand side and they are our physical memory locations and our program on the left. So if you wanted to add a piece of data like the word test, an, a simple hashing function could be to take the numerical value of each of those letters. Now assuming A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, what you end up with is T being 20, E being 5, S being 19, and T being 20. And then you could add those values up, which gives us 64, but there isn't a position 64 in our physical memory. So what you do is you'd use our good old modulus function to work out what the remainder is of dividing that by 16. That will put us in a position within that memory space. So that gives us a zero actually. And so that will go in position zero. Now if I want to find that piece of data, it would calculate the same hash number and I'd be able to find it in the same place. So let's add another piece of data just to see how that works. Let's add high. We'll do the same thing. We'll convert those letters to numbers, add them together and modulo 16 that, which gives us a remainder of one. So that goes in location one and it goes. So adding another piece of data, P this time, nice and simple is 16 16 modulo 16 gives us zero so this is what we call a collision where i want to put that piece of information in location zero but it won't go the obvious thing for a hash function to do then is if it can't go in the location i'm looking for it's just to increase and increment that number until i can actually fit it in it won't go in one but it will go in two and the search function will have similar logic built into it to that same search process if I'm searching then, and I'm looking for high, I would work out those values and work out that it's index one and look for it. If I'm searching for Mr. M, 
I'm going to work out the hash function of that, look in that location, and if it's blank, I know there's nothing there. The only difficulty is, is how we compare hash functions, because we can compare them in a similar way to most algorithms, and most algorithms we care about time complexity, defined by big O notation that we've talked about, or space complexity, how much storage and complexity is required there. But with a hash function, we need to think about how many collisions occur. How often do we try to put data where data already exists? And secondly, is the hash function evenly distributing the data over the amount of physical space we've got? Because if it's not, more collisions will occur and it'll be slower. Final objective is file organization, the use of multi-level indexes. And so the idea is that if we are indexing a file, they can grow enormous, just as the data in the file can, and it'll slow down the access times massively the larger and larger they get. A multi-level index will speed that up by chopping them up into ranges. And we have a couple of indexes, and each index points to another until it finally points to the correct file. Here's an example of a multi-level index. If I'm trying to find location 32, I'd start in my first level, and I'd go for the key value uh, that is the closest to that value, or just under in this case. So that would be the 20. That would point me to a second level index to give me a bit more detail. In this case, I'm, again, I'm still looking for 32, so I'll find the closest one that doesn't go over it. That's 30. That takes me to a third level index that gives me the precise physical location that I can go and get it. So finding the number 32 doesn't take me 32 attempts. It takes me three. Our final objective is explaining the technologies used to manage overflow and the need for file reorganization. So overflow is what happens when the indexing is full in a random access file. If we can't put the data into the table, it's placed into an overflow file that uses sequential storage. So it's a bit like if we can't fit it in here, we might as well stick it somewhere. And we'll just use the simplest possible method to put it in there. Now we could combine the indexed file and the random accessed overflow file together by rehashing every single piece of data if we make a new larger file, and that's why reorganization would be needed. Uh, because if the file is essentially full and we need the overflow file, then searching for things slows down because the moment the search leaves the index, it has to be done serially. It has to be done from start to end, and that's going to be a slow search. So here's an example. We want to add an item, we want to add A, but you can see there that no matter what we calculate the hash value as, it's already full. So the system will search through for an empty place and it won't find it. So what I actually need is I actually need to stick that in my overflow file. And it's just going to go right at the top. It's going to go in the order it arrives, which is not much use really for us. So the best thing to do would be to make a larger hash table, rehash everything, and stick it in there.